Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, today's question comes from Mike Abdo, KE7KVR. Hello, Dave. I like to work QRP at home and in the field. Mechanical considerations aside, such as connections, etc., can window line be used as a direct replacement for coax to minimize line losses from the antenna feed point to the radio. I know there are some forbidden lengths when using window line. How do these apply? Before we answer this question, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Mario Filippi, who is my newest patron. And you too can become a patron of this channel by going to www.patreon.com slash ke0og and finding something that works for you. Now let's take a look at this question. The basic answer to your question is yes and no. Okay, just so that we know what we're working with here. Here's coax. This is probably RG8X, RG8X. Okay, this is a, a nice standard coax that would work well with the QRP station. At HF, the losses are quite low. And this is a little jumper I picked up at Pacificon because I'm forever running out of jumpers. Um, okay, so this is the coax. The nice thing about coax is that you can coil up the excess coax. It can run in any order. It can lay on the ground. It can do all kinds of things like that. This is window line, sometimes called ladder line, but more correctly window line. This has got two parallel uh, conductors in it. You can see them on this little piece down here where there are uh, parallel conductors, okay? And they run next to each other at a fixed distance. The impedance of this line is determined by the thickness of the conductors and the distance they are apart. And for this particular um, arrangement here, known as ladder line, it's 450 ohms. Okay. Now, uh, you can use this as transmission line. It is very low loss. It is very low loss for a variety of reasons. Now, this, however, is not good to place this on the ground. If you do, it can't coil up like this because those, the actual energy, unlike the coax, in the coax, the energy is inside the coax. Okay. In ladder line, the actual energy kind of travels in an RF field that's kind of around this and between it. So if you coil it up like this, these RF fields will interfere with each other and you'll get unpredictable results. Okay, um, now as far as forbidden lengths, we'll get into that a little later because those are also affecting coax and if you have good matches, they don't affect anything, okay? So let's take a look at a couple things going on here. First of all, Let's suppose you have a radio, like a G90. G90. Okay, the output on this is 50 ohms. Now, if this encounters something out here that is a change in impedance, 50 to 300 to 450, a 9 to 1 ratio, some of the energy coming will go through and some of that energy will be reflected from the changes in impedances. And I won't bother you with formulas or anything like that. But the fact is you've got an impedance mismatch and a fairly significant one, which means that you're going to have a lot of reflected energy, and a lot of reflected energy means high SWR. And then you take this out to your antenna, and you got 450 ohms, and you've got some unknown impedance here, but let's just say it's, it's 45 ohms, whatever. Okay, it's going to do the same thing. Part of that energy is going to be reflected, 
part of it will go into the antenna. The part that's reflected, part of it will go stray, part of it will be reflected, and you'll get things going back and forth in here, which is called a standing wave. Now, a standing wave doesn't actually stand. It does move because you have to transfer energy in this direction over here. So the problem with a direct substitution of 450 ohm ladder line in here is these impedance changes. Now you may say, can't I put balance in there? Absolutely you can. Okay, so let's put a 9 to 1 balance. 9 to 1 balance. And... Um, the unbalanced side is actually this side. The balanced side is actually this side. And you've got 450 ohms over here. Now, when you get to the antenna, um, you could do it as a ballon, but it's really a bell, <laughs> bell uh, because it's got this coming out here at, say, 50 ohms. And you've got the same 9 to 1. Can you use the same ballon? Yes, you can actually in practice over here. So you've got to buy a ballon on each end, and this makes it harder to get this thing in the air, by the way. Or you could just replace the short length of coax and then feeding the antenna. But this can be very, very long, hundreds of feet long, and uh, at HF not lose very much signal. And so some people do it for specifically that reason. Now I would suggest for QRP, most people would use um, coax. Why? Because it's just easier to use, okay? Now, if you're worried about a signal from your, your um, antenna up here, coming back down the shield or outside of the shield on this, you can create a choke ballon by wrapping together several feet of coax together, putting tie wraps around that. And you remember what I said about the field outside the cable, which would be there because there's a reflected field on the outside of the cable. This will all tend to cancel in here. And that's a good thing. You don't want your ladder line to cancel, but this you can create basically a, what's called a choke ballon. Uh, and it's real easy to carry. It's not very expensive, except you are paying over a dollar a foot for the coax and all the connectors and everything to, to wrap that up like that. Or you can get an actual transformer ballon uh, if you want, a one-to-one -one ballon at the antenna. So let's just make sure. Oh, um, forbidden lines. Let's look at some transmission line theory. If you've got a quarter wavelength, wavelength, lambda is the Greek letter we use for wavelength. From here to here is a quarter wavelength. Okay, at the very beginning of this, the voltage is max, the current is min. Over here you've got uh, the voltage is zero and the current is max. So it does an inversion, okay, of the signal. Now, that's nice, except that if you terminate this in 50, in, uh, 50 ohms, I'm, I'm talking coax here, 50 ohms, and terminate this in 50 ohms, the length becomes unimportant because this sees a 50 ohm impedance, this sees a 50 ohm impedance, the length does not matter unless there is a mismatch. If there is a mismatch, quarter wave, three quarter wave, and so on, will create some issues for you with the mismatch. But if you're matched, not an issue. Um, this reminds me of an old story. When I first became a ham in 1975, after graduating from college, I was putting up my own home station and I was trying to figure out of what length of coax I should use because I had heard there were forbidden lines. Well, um, I kept asking people and they kept saying, well, your coax needs to be long enough to reach the antenna. 
And I thought they, this was some sort of an in-joke and didn't know what was going on. Finally, I figured it out that the answer to the question, how long should the coax be, is long enough to reach the antenna if you're matched at both ends. If you are matched at both ends, any length of coax you pick is okay. Now, if it is something other than an integral multiple of a half wavelength, okay, then the impedance you see at the one end, if you've got a slight mismatch at the other, it will transform that impedance to a different impedance mismatch, which then your antenna tuner can take care of. But for matched antennas and everything, you're okay. You're okay. So if you're doing QRP, the coaxial cable is far easier to carry around than open wire line. Okay. And if you're working mountaintop soda or poda or whatever. Now, if you happen to be in a situation where you're transmitting to something that's very far away, more than 100 to 200 feet, you may want to go to a thicker coax or consider that, that bit with the 9 to 1 balance and a 1 to 9 balance at the other end and so on uh, to make things all work. So there you have it. And uh, if you would like to help support this channel financially, you can do that by going to decastlercom slash support and look for a way that works for you. Please subscribe, click like, and until we next meet, 73.